Hello everyone and welcome to what is going to be a relatively short developer corner this week in which we're going to be looking at support company changes. Support companies have been for a pretty decent chunk of time, never really seen any major update in the game. They've definitely had new things added on, such as armoured cars and the sort, but to have an entire uh, section dedicated to reworking each of them has not been done. And this is exactly what we're going to be getting in the next DLC and update. So, without further ado, let's go take a look. So the opening paragraph describes how support companies are one of the fundamental building blocks of Hoi4, coming in with division design. Um, the nature of how you design things has really been more so focused on, you know, your infantry to artillery composition, and specifically maybe how many tanks to motorized or mechanized you're going to be using. But the support companies were really just additional buffs along the side and weren't necessarily taken into as much consideration in the overall design that you were going for in the end. Unless of course you really like flame tanks, in which case you might have held that perspective. With the changes coming here today, the hope is that how you choose to design your whole division design is going to be impacted by what support companies you're going to choose. No longer is the support company just something to add on the side, it is hopefully going to be an integral part of the overall composition of the division design. So the first point of order in regards to support company changes is going to be about engineer companies, or the wholesome little shovel. Previously, in the current version of the game, shown here with Germany, you'd find that if you go over to your infantry and look at your engineer companies, the current buff that they give you is going to be five flat entrenchment. From the first image that were granted back in the dev diary, we actually see that the entrenchment you now get from that starting German division is going to look a little bit more like two instead of five, well, 2.25. This is because the new change is actually going to be a dependent stacking modifier that the engineer company is going to give you. So instead of giving you five flat entrenchment, you're now going to be getting a bonus of 0.2 entrenchment per leg infantry. So if you've got four infantry in the division, you're going to get four times 0.25, which is one entrenchment. And therefore, because we see there is nine infantry divisions there, you're actually getting 2.25, although the actual number given shows two. For those who don't see, it's the little bit at the top left which says Battalion Modifier Leg Infantry, Entrenchment 0.25. The final note they mention on this section is that in this new composition, shown here, there are four cavalry divisions assigned, and the entrenchment has remained at 2.25. This is because, as we saw in the previous thing, Leg Infantry were the only ones getting the entrenchment buff, meaning you can no longer build, let's say, a cavalry division, and then just stick an uh, engineer company on it and get the bonus of five entrenchment. So basically you cannot really hold lines as well anymore with cavalry divisions. If you want that entrenchment, if you want a good defensive line, you're going to have to rely on leg infantry. This is most likely because cavalry battalions weren't necessarily used in holding great lines. So they really want it so that now support companies are going to give you buffs regarding specific categories. Note, changes to existing support companies vary subject to change. So maybe this won't be quite how it looks in the final product. So for the next section, we're going to go through everything that they've listed here, which isn't a mega long list because there's going to be much more information given later when they actually get into the true dev diary cycle. But this should give you some tidbits of information about what's going forward. Beginning with the engineer companies, we see that the flat entrenchment they gain um, has changed, but the one they get from their tech is going to remain. So there is going to be a little bit of a buff you can get from uh, leveling up your engineers with tech, but for the most part, it's going to be a modifier. For those who didn't see, as it stands right now, if you choose to go to your support companies, you'll find that engineer company one um, is just giving you the tech, but as you go along, the second level will give you plus one entrenchment as a baseline stat, and then engineers three and four will give you plus 200% modifier. So this one, the 1939 tech for engineer company two is probably going to stay somewhat similar. So you are just going to get a flat buff towards your engineer companies, but for 1942 and 45, you're going to get a multiplicative factor. Um, it's probably not going to stay at 200%. It's probably going to be lower, but let's say if it was 200%, 
then your previously 2.25 is going to work itself up to a 6.75 entrenchment. So a pretty significant buff if it was to stay the same. Recon companies coming up next. Um, I have to say, I'm very, very rarely going to be using recon companies. I just feel like they always eat through your support equipment and never really give you enough buffs to justify it. Their hope is that with the changes they've got coming up, they're now going to give you a 10% soft attack bonus to all battalions matching the artillery category. So if you're building any um, div division compositions that have maybe two or three artillery in them, then maybe the recon company is going to give you that extra buff of soft attack that you need. When it comes to changing, I'm not sure if they're actually stressing whether it's going to be an additive change or whether it's going to be a replacing change. So are the original stats that you get from the recon company going to remain or is this like completely taking over what the previous use of recon company is i assume it's going to be additive i don't know why they'd replace it that doesn't make any sense moving on they also make reference to the fact that there's more than one type of recon company so the standard recon company gave us a, uh, shown above with a 10 percent soft attack but if you're going with light tank recon you're going to get a 10% hard attack to all your armored battalions. So making sure that you've got the right type of recon company for the right type of division will matter. Note that recon will also get some other new toys, which will be discussed in the Doctrine's Dev Diary at a later date. So yep, it's definitely going to be some kind of uh, Doctrine rework coming for land division templates and such in the future. Field hospitals come next with a what they described as a left field modifier in which they're going to be increasing the strength or HP of all infantry battalions by 10%. Perhaps the extra bit of HP will be useful for making sure they can stay in the fight longer. Um, I've always still considered field hospital to be more of a defensive position, so I'm not sure how successful the 10% buff is going to be in the grand scheme of things, especially when I've always considered that defense and entrenchment stack modifiers to be far more superior, but I guess we'll find out in testing. Flame tanks. They now increase the breakthrough of all infantry battalions by 5%. So if I guess flame tanks weren't good before, um, which I, they certainly were, they're even better now so that if you are building your infantry battalions with the if you're maybe perhaps not one of these people who likes to build specialist tank divisions that like to go around in circle divisions and push the front line forward, and you rely in heavily on just a flat group of infantry divisions, then getting your flame tanks is definitely something you might want to consider. Flame tanks, pretty good. And lastly, in changes that they talk about with support companies, there's military police, who I think kind of got sidelined a bit with, um, is it La Resistance, where they did the rework to how resistance works in the game and you could just use spies to reduce resistance um, and therefore I literally never felt the need to use military police in my garrison templates because you just used some horses. To make them a little bit more viable in the context of the game they're now going to increase the base org recovery rate of all infantry battalions by 20% so I'm thinking on a front line that's probably going to see a lot of um, retreating and then coming back maybe on very contentious front lines like the Soviets, who are constantly getting pushed back inside their own country, maybe military police is going to be an interesting choice. Base org recovery rate at 20% is, seems pretty good, doesn't it? 20%? I think so. So we've looked at some of the support companies, but have we looked at some of the doctrines they're going to be changing? Now, I assume there's going to be a wider dev diary about what they're changing with doctrines, but from the images we're seeing here, they do look somewhat similar. So let's take a look. The first one shows that dispersed support is going to give you signal companies now grant 10% defense to all artillery battalions and divisions. I can't speak necessarily to how good this is going to be. I can only speak to the experience of how I play, but I haven't found myself in a position where I always felt that the artillery was going to be the baseline of kind of needing that extra level of defense, but it's certainly nothing terrible plus 10% defense, I just think that, at least in the current way that I build divisions, that I'll never have so many artillery battalions that justify the defense stack modifier. But maybe if you've got two or three, that becomes plus 20 or 30%, maybe it's pretty good. To put it to you another way, if you're going to have a 10 width division which has got, you know, one piece of artillery in it, I don't necessarily think that the modifier is actually worth it. But once you've got like a 30 width uh, division, with two or three pieces of artillery, 
I definitely think this buff could be much more valuable in that perspective. Moving on, we've got Airland Battle, which is going to give standard recon grants 10% an air attack to anti-air battalions. I think this is just a nice, wholesome little buff. I see nothing wrong with this at all. Um, it effectively just makes your anti-air even better, which if you're specializing in Airland Battle, I don't see any reason why this would be a bad thing, especially considering that air superiority continues to be so important in the game. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Mechanized Wave comes next, coming down at the quite far to the bottom of the Mass Assault Doctrine on the left side branch, it's going to see a change towards the armoured cars and giving you one max organisation to all leg infantry battalions. Just looking at that as a concept actually, I know it's quite a late tech, but let's just take this standard Soviet um, template. You've got organisation at 54, if you were to get plus one organisation from all your infantry, that's nine. Nine Orc, which is quite literally like almost a what 16% buff perhaps 16% more org is nothing to be scoffed at and that adds up with the bigger the division is going to be so I guess that's pretty good I they really want to edge you towards not necessarily going for the free manpower that you get on the right side of the mass assault branch still it's pretty late though and finally we've got central planning which states that Logistic Company adds 5% defense to all infantry battalions in division. Although actually in the text, it says that also applies to motorized and mechanized, which is definitely worth considering, considering that means it could definitely apply to your tank divisions as well, just sticking out there. But 5% um, defense? I don't see any world where that's a bad thing, um, especially when it adds up to each infantry and motorized and mechanized. So this feels like a buff that stacks along both sides of the warfare. Pretty good. So with that, that actually wraps up this dev diary. It is indeed a short one, which is kind of why I kept it pretty pacey, just keeping things going. Um, and it kind of shows as a highlight for what is coming next. It's going to be support company changes. It's going to be changes towards how land warfare works. Really, I guess just an overall rework of the current meta of Hoi Force combat system. So don't be too surprised if in the future you see new people coming out with um, whole spreadsheets describing the best, most optimal infantry division template, tank division template. There's going to have to be unique templates for everything because the support companies will, will hopefully vary the outcome of your stats very dramatically. So to wrap that, they finally end by saying all of these little things and balanced little changes are important for a new small feature or shelf in a future dev diary. I'm not quite sure what that means, but if I was to guess, maybe it's a support company designer. That's like the most logical thing I can think of, where maybe you choose the outcome of certain stats. But other than that, I couldn't really tell you. The final line states that speaking of dev diaries, the new dev diary will be coming next week. That means this is the end of developer corners and the starting of the next DLC dev diary cycle leading up to well, whatever the new dev uh, DLC is going to be called. So with that, I guess I'll see you next week and say thank you very much for watching. If you liked, feel free to like, feel free to subscribe. And as I said before, I'll see you next week. Bye.